In this episode, we're painting demon flesh, coming up after this. How's it going on guys and girls? Welcome back to Burn Aquila Painting. My name is Graham and welcome to the channel. So the first thing you're probably noticing if you see my other videos is it's a little bit different. We're actually in the room where I do my painting uh, at my painting table. Um, I'm trying to do something a little bit different. It doesn't look as good for these headshots, but it's somewhere I'm really comfortable with. And hopefully it'll, it'll come across in the videos that I'm more comfortable on camera in this position. Um, so let me know what you think in the comments. So like I said, we are painting demon flesh in this video. I had a lot of people on my Instagram asking how I did the demon flesh on my... Plague Burst Crawlers. I've had a lot of people ask on my Instagram how I did the demon flesh on my Malefic Blight Hauler. So we're going to be looking on how to do the demon flesh, a nice vibrant purple in this case, but you can do demon flesh in any color. Just follow the same tips and just in the chosen color that you want to paint in. So the way I do my demon flesh is dead simple. It's basically a red, white and your chosen color, base color, which is basically purple in this instance. I'm using Vallejo model paints in this instance, but you can use any brand you like. It doesn't really matter as long as it's the color that you want to paint. So I start off by basically coating the whole thing in my darkest tone, which is just a straight purple, making sure to get a good opacity. So it's just flat color. So once our base coat is down, where are we putting our next layer of paints? Now, what we want to do is have a look at the area we're painting and notice the raised areas. And that is where the light is going to be hitting the model on the raised areas. The shadows underneath, the light is on top. So our next layers of paint are going to be on those top surfaces. A good idea to find where these surfaces are is to take a picture of your mini with the light coming down. Once you've got that picture, turn it to black and white and where it is lighter on the area you're painting, that is where the sun or the light source will be hitting where you're painting. In this case, it's all the bulges around the metal bits at the bottom and all the tops of the folds of the flesh around the actual fleshy bits. In this tutorial, I'm not going to be using any shades at all. It's going to be strictly paint. This is a little challenge for myself because I usually do use shades for the recesses and things like that. But in this case, I'm not going to be doing that. Just to see if, uh, if I can get the same kind of results or even better result not using them. Partly because I wanted to see if I could do it. And secondly, uh, I wanted to show you how I did it on these. Malefic Blight Hauler. So uh, here we go. So now we know where we're going to put our paint. It's time to do that. So what we want to do is to add a little bit of white each time for each layer of the painting process. As you can see, I'm using a wet palette. You don't have to use a wet palette. You can just use tissue or just a tile. Just helps your paint stay wetter for longer. So once my base coat of the purple is down, all I do is start adding a little bit of white to that paint. And the key here is the consistency of the paint. I'm using a glaze medium from Vallejo, but you can just use water. These first steps I would consider glazing. So I'm looking for a consistency of paint, which still has its color, but is transparent. As this is our first layer, we don't want it too light. So just keep that in mind when you're painting. Consistency wise, you want it to be transparent because we're gonna build those colors over time with many layers. The one thing to keep in mind at this point is not to get the next layers of color in the deepest recesses. We want that base coat to be in those deepest recesses. Layering colors up like this really helps give you smooth transitions across your painting. And if you ever get lost on where you're putting the paint, go back to your black and white picture that you've got just as a reference of where you're putting paint. Of course, that black and white picture is just a reference. So if you feel like there's too much of a dark color or too much of a light color in an area, change it to what you think looks best. Once our first couple of layers of the lighter purple are done, just add a little bit more white and keep on building that color. While doing this, keep in mind that you're painting in smaller, smaller areas. You don't want to be covering up the paintwork that you've already done. By doing this, you're building up those transitions. On the base coats and your first layers, you don't need to be massively precise because you can go in later and clean up any mistakes. Just keep in mind that the deepest recesses you want is your base color and you're building up from there.
Now we've done three or four layers of just adding that white consistently to your layers of paint, painting in smaller areas and building up that transition from dark to light. I now add a little drop of red in with some of the lighter tones of the purple, just to give it a little bit more of like a living flesh tone. If you're going for something a little bit more dead, you don't have to add the red. This will give it more of a pastel color, more of a dead whitish tone instead of a, a pinkish hue. Now with that pinkish white color, we want to add that to the most raised areas or the areas that stick out the furthest as a light will hit. We're not necessarily painting this in the center of each part. These shapes aren't perfect circles. So just have a look at where you're painting or where you think the light would hit the most. That's where we're gonna be putting our lightest colors. Now we've built up those colors from dark to light, our bulk of our skin tone is done. It's just to add those little extra bits, like in this instance, the little pustules and things like that. How I do them, I like contrast as my greens and purples show on this miniature. So what I do, I paint these pustules white, a couple of layers so it's a good, bright, solid color, and then add a little bit of yellow wash. Try not to get this on your skin tone. This is just for those little pustules, those little spots. Once that yellow wash is dry, add a little bit of thin down white in the middle, and it looks uh, like a little pustule spot. This miniature does have one or two little veins on it. Nice and simple, just mix up a pink color from the paints of my palette and then just paint those a nice pink color. And there you have it, that is it. That is how I paint my demon flesh tones. Bitch, I got prelins on prelins on prelins on prelins on prelins on prelins that's all, but my run through the money, the press will be calling. Left on my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back, tell me I'm garbage. I'm going through something, that's why I ain't calling. Phone and progression, it's all that I wanted. The phone and affection, I summon and dub it. Cause bitch, I got prelins on prelins on prelins on prelins on prelins on prelins that's all, but my run through the money, the press will be calling. Left on my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back, tell me I'm calling. I hope you found this video interesting guys. I hope it helps you in your painting endeavors. If you do want to support the channel guys, I do have a Patreon. The link is down below. You've probably heard all the spiel before on other channels. There's two tiers. Go check it out if you want to support and be a part of the Bone Aquila community. And again, let me know what you think of this video and this setup. Do you like it? Do you like the old one? What do you prefer? Also, let me know what you think about this video in the comments. Give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already guys. And thank you for checking in and sticking with the the end of this video. Until next time, peace!